What is going on, guys? It is your self-proclaimed mediocre Pokemon Master here, Tiggly Man, coming at you with some Battle Stadium ranked doubles. Now, I know you noticed it might look a little bit different today. Um, I lost my layout. Uh, it's not gone forever. But the Elgato, I believe, kind of made my computer crash because we're using an old Elgato. My computer isn't to the best of specs. So if you guys get a chance, uh, let me know in the comments if you actually like this more raw style of recording. But without further ado, uh, we are going to be doing uh, the VGC 2020 format at the moment. Uh, trying to get to Master Ball by, well, what is it? It's like the 26th or the 28th. Oh, wow. I was off. Okay, so we got three days to get the Master Ball tier. I'm at Great Ball tier right now. Just hit it. But okay, without further ado, let's get this team breakdown in. So here to start the team off, we got the Assault Vested Torkoal set, Sludge Bomb to get the ability to set up, Fire Blast for a strong single hit stab move, Earth Power to increase our speed up to make ourselves even bulkier, and Solar Beam just for grass coverage, because that's really solid right now with people trying to counter Dracovish and stuff of sorts to kill Gastrodon, uh, Melodic, and other threats. Next up, we have Corviknight, which I was so sick of seeing Darman uh, not Darmantian, um, Excedrill, Tyranitar combo with the Sand Rush. I was like, what's the perfect mod to kind of counter that? I know, um, I believe Tyranitar carries a Fire-type move, so he can Dynamax and then go after my Corviknight. We can try to play around that. For the most part, Corvi Corviknight will wall the both of them and pressure them. And we just got a typical weakness pol policy set with Body Press, Brave Bird, Iron Head, Bulk Up. Should probably put Roost on him, but uh, I'm trying to keep him as offensive as possible, not really plan on stalling with him. And then we have our Defensive Rotom Wash. This is Max HP, Max Defense. Um, just as a utility to Will-O-Wisp physical attackers and uh, weaken them for our sweepers to come in. And then next, we have my usual pride and joy choice specs, Dragapult. Again, great speed tier. He outspeeds Dracozolt, Dracovish without um, any Tailwind or stuff of sorts. But even if there's Choice Scarf, we still outspeed it can knock them out. And also, Dragapult pairs really well with Grimmsnarl. So on this Grimmsnarl, we have Reflect, Fake Out, Spear Break, Sucker Punch. So on threats like uh, Duraludon, uh, Dracovish, and Dracozolt, we can just fake them out and then drop a Draco on them. Or if they're with Wismacot trying to set up a Tailwind, we can fake out the Wismacot, etc., etc. And we got to focus Sash to make sure he stays alive and can get that Reflect up before he goes out. And then here with Darmanitan, I noticed a lot of people really set up to make sure they have Speed Choice Scarfed Darmanitan. And if they're not set up to have Speed Choice Scarfed Darmanitan... They usually don't have speed normal Darmanitan with their bulkier quick mons, like someone like Excedrill, okay? If it's Sand Rush, our choice band Darmanitan can outspeed him if I throw Torkoal out and set up a Drought and get rid of their Sandstorm. So, on him, we have Icicle Crash, Flare Blitz, Super Power, Rock Slide, and he is going to be our o coin machine on Tyranitar um, and Excedrill. Without further ado, guys, let's uh, get some matches in, just so you know the rental team, the, the team ID will be down in the description. Hey guys, I got a match here. My uh, audio got kind of screwy when I originally recorded the video, so I'm going to be doing a voice over here. Now, uh, originally, upon looking at this guy's team, I was very concerned about the Pikachu being G-Max and Parahexing my team. So uh, I made, I wanted to make sure I picked the, the appropriate counters, which would be a uh, high-speed, hard-hitting mons such as Dragapult and Choice Banded Darmanitan. Uh, Conkeldor is always looking scary because uh, if he's Guts or Iron Fist, that Mach Punch will Oko Darmanitan without a screen being up. Gyarados, as always, looking like a big threat. We have uh, Excedrill, which I believe is Mold Breaker because there is uh, no Tarantar to set the sand. So there I go, leading Dragapult and Darmanitan. Heavy offensive threats to be able to KO whatever is going to try to hax me if that's, uh, if that's the route he chooses to go. And um, yeah, I, I really dug how Torkoal looked in this match. Unfortunately, uh, he ain't going to see too much. You're going to see... Choice Banded Darmanitan really, really shine here. He's going to come in, hit hard, and end this match fast. Doing what he does. I ran Scarf for the longest time, but this uh, Choice Banded tech, not sure how long it's going to hold up for, but as long as you know your speed tiers, and you can kind of identify your opponent's items, he can uh, really hit super hard when it's completely necessary. Just waiting on the opponent here. I nearly used the whole clock up, but that's okay. Anything to, uh, to allow a good match to happen. Spiffy Oats. That dude has a funny name. Spiffy Oats. We're going to try to make some Splippy Oats. Let's get this going. Right off the bat, you can see he leads Chandelure and Togekiss. And that Chandelure um, had me pretty nervous because I was concerned that he was Choice Scarf. And if I remember correctly, I do believe he was. So I think I Dynamax my Dragapult, if I'm not mistaken. 
Let's see if my memory proves me right here. Checking out the team real quick, seeing if uh, getting a Grim Snarl Slam screens is uh, very important at all, which I opted not to. Okay, so in this one, I did not Dynamax my Dragapult. Must have been a different match. I'm going crazy. But that's why this match ended up turning out to be a wash, because that Chandelure was not scarfed. Here comes the Hex. Check this out. The Mantan's about to put in big work. So it's sashed. whoop de doo I got this meaty rock slide coming off of a choice band. Now that Togekiss does eat it up very nicely for me being choice banded, but unfortunately... Togekiss ain't gonna be able to talk back. Here it comes, big flinch. Bop, just like that. Now that was a good bit of hacks because if he did choose to Dazzling Gleam, I'm almost certain, uh, since I popped that weakness policy, if he was carrying Dazzling Gleam, that would have knocked out both my guys. But you know, 30% of those matches where you leave that rock slide, it will flinch. And that Intimidate, I I'm banded. So this Darm, if he calced his team, is still gonna hit just like that Choice Scarf set. And all we do is Shadow Ball spam. Luckily with my banded Darm, he ain't forced to go first, so I can get that hefty uh, hit off on that Gyarados. Because the Rock Slide receives the .75 multiplier on its power when it hits multiple targets. But as soon as Togekiss is removed from play, well, it's gonna be 100% power, not .75. And it will smash Gyarados. Check this out. Togekiss gone. Here it comes. I did not expect this to happen. Smashed. You love to see it. And he's going to end the match off with Conkelder. And Conkelder is going to give me some problems. It's not going to make me lose, but he's able to put in a little bit of work, you know? Alright, he's of course going to Dynamax here. And I'm able to come out with Torkoal and clean up. I just wanted to make sure Torkoal got a little bit of usage, so I had to make sure I pull, pulled him out for my Dynamax at the end. Shadow Ball doing fantastic damage. I'm not 100% certain that is Assault Vested Conkelder. Oh, never mind. I believe his Flame Orb is going to kick on in a second. So if that was Assault Vested Conkelder, he would have ate up that Shadow Ball even more so. But, Warren Luck, that is a super offensive Conkelder. I do want to build a Conkelder team, and I think I'm going to run mine Iron Fist with Assault Vest. I think that would be the best bet. I always feel more comfortable with really bulky Mons. Yep, there's the uh, life uh, Flame Orb kicking on his guts. I'm going to go Torkoal here and clean this stuff up. I'm a really big fan of Torkoal in this meta. I'm curious to see how uh, the DLC is going to really shift this meta with uh, the over 200 new mons coming back in. Because Torkoal was never really like VGC viable. Of course, uh, depending on how good of a player you were, you could uh, make him put in work. But um, right now, he's actually seen a, a decent bit of usage. And I'm, I'm loving using him. He's a fantastic Sunsetter. He's able to eat hits, nearly nothing Oko's him once he's Dynamax, so he's always guaranteed to nearly get a hit off. I apologize for the light quality issues on uh, the video sometimes. My computer's a little weak, so it's a hard time rendering. But hopefully with due time and soon, I'll be getting a new PC to patch that up. He's a max Rockfall. Now, this for this being a non-stab move on my max HP Torkoal, it does a lot of damage, but of course, it would have been a 2 at KO, and if he led with Conkeldu, this would have been a good way to stall out his Dynamax and also put some offensive pressure down. 
I got the special defense drop with that shadow ball. I was really curious um, if uh, he would have, you know, knocked out my Dragapult and to see if the Torkoal could have took him down from that half health point that he was at. But, you know, maybe in another match in the future we'll be able to see that. So, made quick work out of this team. Galarian Dermanitan, Choice Banded, put in so much work. So much work this match. And let's go right into the next match, guys. Now, I was terrified of this Trick Room team. Luckily, I'm running like a bulky offense team, so I do have Mons that can benefit off of this Trick Room. But uh, the Dustclops, Gothitel, and Rhyperior were making me nervous. And um, my opponent definitely probably knew that because he does bring them. I'm glad he didn't run Fake Out on Gothitel, which you'll see at the beginning that allowed me to get a little bit of an opening. Because I do believe here I go Grimmsnarl, Dragapult. Yep. That is probably, you know, I'm not the most experienced doubles player, but the Grimmsnarl Dragapult lead is, I just feel like under most scenarios, is so safe, like all the time, because your Dragapult's always guaranteed to go first, and if they didn't use a Choice Scarfer, you are going to go first. I'm pretty sure the only thing that speeds uh, Dragapult is Ninjask and Acelagor, and I don't think they carry anything to Oko him anyway, nor will you ever really see them in BGC. I was uh, personally thinking about running Trick Room. I, I do want to run a Trick Room team soon, but I always just like running um, half bulky Mons, then kind of like two or three uh, really fast, hard hitting Mons. That's just kind of like my play style. I know it has to change if I want to start to be the best, but that's what I feel comfortable with right now, so that's what I play. But hard Trick Room, I feel like, because I like a lot of the fat Mons, I'd really heavily benefit off that. I just don't like absolutely relying on Trick Room being up. Oh, he got, got the tell and uh, Togekiss in this one. Try to remember my play here. You always got a Shadow Ball spam. Shadow Ball spam is the best bet. You don't worry about popping weakness policies. And if you're getting neutral hits, you're going to be doing big damage with that stab Shadow Ball. And you can never, ever go wrong with Rock Slide to make sure you're breaking both the sashes at the beginning of the match. And we always go for flinches too. Unfortunately, the flinch doesn't work out for us this time. Which, you know, more times than not, you, the flinch isn't the play, typically. Like, you always want the flinch, but it's only 30% of the time. So if, you're, if your play every game is to make sure you flinch with Rock Slide, you are going to be very uh, much so displeased. So he gets his Trick Room up, making my Mons go last, because his whole team is slower than my guys. So they'll both go last, and our Rock Slide hacks will be completely negated for the time being. I was really afraid of this Rhyperior. I'm not sure what people are running in VGC right now, but when I played singles, I ran my Rhyperior with the max special defense, max HP, with an adamant nature. And at level 50, he rocked out with like 177 attack, I believe. And uh, his spadef was 104 with 150 defense. So once that uh, sandstorm went up, his defense and spadef were matched. And he was really hard to take down. Even like Choice Specs, Rotom Wash, um, when I was Dynamax, would do like two thirds of my health. That was it. Pop my weakness policy, and I'd pick my Oko up in return. It was, a, it was a really fun set to run. It's probably my safest and most reliable thing I've ever ran in this meta, period. I had uh, two other buddies use the weakness policy, spe special defense, Rhyperior, and they were both able to get to Master Ball tier. One of them was learning, and he just worked his way up to Master Ball tier while he was learning over uh, like a two-week period. But of course, people get around it as you get high up in the ladder. So I opted to Dynamax my Dragapult here, because if he is carrying a weakness policy, he's more than likely not going to carry any ways to buff his attack, so I wanted to make sure we start knocking his attack down as soon as possible. Sorry, that's my timer. So I'm going to Max Wormwind here to knock his attack down one stage. We'll just ignore that hypnosis. That's all we really can do is just not talk about it. We avoid it. That's all that matters. So let's get this guy's attack down to nothing. It's a bummer that Sandstorm is up because this um, Max Wormwind is not doing as much as it should. If that Sandstorm wasn't up, there's going to be like an extra 50% to that. Not that that's going to make a huge difference, but, you know, still. Rhyperior is a very tanky Mon, especially with the Solid Rock ability. He's crazy. Taking a quarter less damage from super effective hits. And I just want to make sure this Rhyperior's Dynamax is completely useless. So I'm going to go Grim Snarl here, and I'm going to get my Reflect up. I 
I can't remember if I fake out right away or if I reflect. But let's find out. So I'm going to max Phantasm just to start getting defenses, defenses down. Just to make sure nothing's uh, walling me. And I want to make sure that uh, Gothitelle is eliminated so no one can go to bed. This was a really risky play because that Hypnosis has a 60% hit rating. But as you're going to see, my Dragapult is too quick and it's going to dodge it. Like I said, we're going to ignore that Hypnosis. Who cares? So that Rapier is at minus one right now. And with that Reflect Up, it's another minus two. So his attack is nearly cut in half. Avoided the Hypnosis. That's what we do. Dodge, dodge, dodge. So Max Rockfall is going to slap a little bit. Actually, not really at all. <laughs> no more. No one's going to bed today. I'm just trying to open my window for Torkoal to come in and clean up. Because I believe his last mod is his Choice Specs Torkoal. Which did have me a little concerned because uh, that mod hits really hard. Luckily I had Sucker Punch in my Grim Snarl. So when he uh, goes to spam Eruption, I'm able to get some chip on him to lower the power of that move. Because if he's at max HP, that Eruption hits really, really hard under the sun. I mean, after Stab, when he's at full HP, that's a 225 power move. Add the choice specs in the sun. That move gets to some crazy heights. So Sucker Punch that Torkoal. And then we're going to Max Worm win the Rhyperior again just to make sure his attack is completely out of the question. So when my Torkoal eventually comes in, he cannot dent him at all. Sucker Punch for our chip. Good chip. But you, look how much uh, that eruption did to my Grimmsnarl. That's, a, I believe, a max HP Grimmsnarl. So that did quite a lot. And he's gone. But luckily, him locking eruption completely opens the door for my Assault Vested Torkoal to come in and 1v1 him with, with ease. And now, with my Reflect Up and my two Max Worm wins off, that Rhyperior is at minus four. So his attack is three times less than what it used to be, essentially. So the Rhyperior is no longer a threat. I believe we lose Dynamax this turn. Well, actually, I can't remember. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that was my Dragapult's third turn of Dynamax. I can't... Yeah, okay. That was, that was both of ours. So we both shrink down. And I believe this is the last turn of Trick Room. We are going to find out whose Torkoal is slower. I'm trying to think. I think mine goes first. But I can't quite remember. No, I think his, his Torkoal goes first. My Torkoal goes before his Rhyperior. Which really works out. You'll see. So we're going to Solar Beam that Rhyperior. And this is a modest max special attack Torkoal. So... I know it's a quad hit, but still, this, this solar beam hits hard no matter what. Soak up that sun. Come on, turtle man. And beam that boy with the splippies. Get out of here. Yep. And then Choice Specs Dragapult's going to be doing uh, what he does and knocking things out at near full health with neutral hits. And that'll be that match. That trick room really had me nervous, but we were able to play around it for uh, what it was. And we're going to be going into the last match here. This last match uh, most definitely did not go my way. And this, uh, I just ranked up to rank 8. Coincidentally, one match before this, uh, the dude forfeited on the first turn after I faked out, faked out his Wismacot. So we actually have one win in rank 8. This is our second battle. And um, all the time. Tyranitar always makes me nervous. He is hard to remove in this meta, sincerely. With Dynamax being a thing, he is really hard to Oko. If it's a all-out attacking Tyranitar, that's fine. But the max HP, max defense, and impish nature weakness policy is really difficult to remove. And with his base, I believe 134 attack, when that weakness policy pops, he's able to pick up Okos, even with zero attack investment. Things Tyranitar is a beast. 
So of course we're going to start off hyper aggressive. We got to make sure Choice Band or Mantan is up in their face. Um, because, you know, if we disregard Scarf, the only thing that outspeeds him is Hydreigon. But we're going to find out very quickly that that was not the move. Because there's something peculiar about that Lucario. And, you know, I even thought about it when I initially recorded this. I, I really thought that Lucario looked funny and I wonder what he could possibly have been running. And I believe... Yeah. So, of course, I can't let that Sylveon Hyper Voice. Anyone who plays VGC knows how devastating Hyper Voice is, so I gotta fake her out. That can't happen. And I'm sitting here... I'm like, what do I need to do? Like, what has to happen to get rid of this Lucario and chip down the Sylveon as much as possible? So I'm checking the team, seeing what he can possibly switch into, depending if I Flare Blitz or Superpower, whatever. I deemed uh, Superpower to be the play because, well, Lucario knocks out both my Mons that are in front of him right now. So he's the biggest threat. I got to remove him right now. And here's the kicker. He was Scarfed, which I personally think is really cool. I should have honestly saw it coming. It, it, cro it crossed my mind, but I just felt like there really wasn't too much I could do. But I very easily could have gone Dragapult that turn predicting that. Because, uh, you know, it's Ghost type. But you live and you learn. Maybe uh, if we ever come across Scarf Lucario ever again, for whatever reason, we can make that happen. Someone's car alarm is going off. Okay, it stopped. Cool. Torquil is in. I'd like to say the threat is in, but unfortunately, with uh, the way this be, it ain't looking too hot. But I believe I get this reflect up just to help minimize the amount of damage that Lucario can do. And you already know, you already know who's replacing that Lucario right now. His defenses are down. He has no reason to sack his choice, Scarver. I'll let, let you guys see. With draw, draws, and lo and behold, here he comes. Big boy. When I made this team, um, kind of realized our mana my only means of absolutely nuking him. Because if I spirit break with Grimmsnarl, a weakness policy is going to pop. If it is carrying weakness policy, and it's going to start um, coming after my team hard and heavy. I think I need to start playing a little more aggressively against Tyrantar. Because I'm not sure how common weakness policy is, but in singles, that's all he knew. It's all anyone carried on him, so you always timed up your super effective hit at the right moment to make sure that that o code him so none of your mons had to faint. And luckily here, he went Wismacott to the right, which I carry on max poison on my Torkoal, so he can set up, because he's, he's bulky as is, you know, especially with the Assault Vest, so if we get a couple max poisons off, give him to plus one, plus two special attack, he'll really start putting in work, especially if the, the sun's up. So we're able to take this Wismacott all the way down to its Focus Sash, and luckily, because his Tyranitar has that amazing sand stream, he's able to knock himself out. So that Focus Sash ain't a thing. So I'll be honest with you, I kind of felt good, like, right about here. I was still nervous about Tyranitar, don't get me wrong at all. I really was. But I felt good right in this moment. I had my Reflect up, Tyranitar was small. But if I remember correctly, I think this Tyranitar does a bit too much damage for comfort. Which was unfortunate and expected. Because I needed Darmanitan to be able to take out Tyranitar. That's the prime reason why I brought him. Brought him for Tyranitar and Umbreon. Because Umbreon is uh, a whole nother bitch and I have to get out of play. Umbreon is so strong. So I'm just going after Lucario. Trying to weasel around a weakness policy popping off. Trying to get my terrain up. Because when my droughts up, Torkoal's uh, water hits are kind of negated because they're essentially neutral when the sun's up and uh, my power's boosted too. I am happy to see that first match in here, well first and I think uh, second match too, their man Tan put a solid, solid bit of work in. I don't think I'm ever going to go back to Choice Scarf Because I think everyone runs their damage calcs for Choice Scarf. When you run that band, that's going to throw a lot of people off. Because I don't think band's super common at all. It is a thing. Like, it's not completely negated. But people don't predict it. Especially when you see, like, Dragapult Darm. You always expect our mana for the speed control. And this max Rockfall, man, does it hit hard. For 
my defense being base 140, being max HP under a reflect, if that reflect wasn't up, that would have took me down to almost red off of one hit, which is crazy. Because as I was saying before, nearly anything super effective doesn't really OCO Torkoal. Unfortunately, our Shadow Ball off Dragapult cannot do really much damage at all. At all to um, the Sylveon. So we're going to get our Shadow Ball off. And I believe I maxed poisoned it. Just trying to remove it from play. And even so, even with uh, my special attack boost and everything, there was no way I was removing that Tyranitar from play. No way. It wasn't happening. That was good damage. For what it was, that was really good damage. And that's second max Rockfall. It was a three-hit KO. Which was great if we Dynamaxed in the same turn, but uh, we didn't. But it's alright, it happens. But look at Torkoal eat up that Hyper Voice. Did I think 40 damage? Nothing. Doing, doing what he does, tanky as hell. And getting some damage off in return. And then of course, we are not able to tank this last hit from Tyranitar. We are in red, and he still has his Dynamax, he's nearly at full health. So, not only can we not KO him no matter what, we get KO'd no matter what. Let's Tyranitar smoke me. Hey yo, thanks for turning, tuning in, tuning in, whoa, tripping over my tongue there. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, just so you know, the rental te team code will be down in the description. So if you guys want to use this team, it'll be up probably for a week or two. Um, I'm at the point where I'm replacing my old teams now with new teams that are coming up. And I'll hopefully uh, you guys will see my growth as a player and these teams will get better and better. And uh, you guys want to use them more often. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I'll catch you on the next one. Later.